Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 4 of Radio.net video series. In this session, we'll learn about the purpose of SQL command object, creating an instance of the SQL command class, when and how to use execute reader, execute scalar, and execute non-query methods of the SQL command object. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 1 and 2 of this video series. So what's the SQL command class? SQL command class is used to prepare an SQL statement or a stored procedure that we want to execute on a SQL Server database. In this session, we'll see how to use the SQL command class to prepare an SQL statement and execute that on a database. In a later video session, we'll see how to actually execute stored procedures using SQL command class. Now, as far as the SQL command class is concerned, there are three methods that are very commonly used execute reader, execute non-query, and execute scalar methods. So when do we use them? Execute reader is usually used whenever the T SQL statement that we are trying to execute on the database, if it returns more than you know a single value, then we use execute reader. Okay. If we want to perform an insert, update, or delete, then we use execute non-query. Whereas if the query returns a single value, that means a scalar value, then we use execute scalar. For example, you know, if the query returns the total number of rows in a table, then we can use execute scalar. Or if we are trying to compute the average salary of an employee, you know, still that is a single value. So whenever the query returns a single value, then we use execute scalar method. Let's look at an example of using each one of these methods. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Okay, so I have a web form here. I have just dragged and dropped the grid view control onto the web form. And now let's flip to the code behind. So what we want to do is basically, I have a SQL Server database, which has got this, you know, the name of the database is sample. And within that database, I have TBL product table, which has got this data, product ID, name, unit, price, and quantity available. I want to display all this data in the grid view control on this web form. So obviously to do that, in the previous session we have already learned about using the SQL connection object. So in the web.config, if you look at this, I have the connection string. So this is the name of the connection string, the connection string itself, and the provider is system.data.sql client. Okay, so we need to you know read that connection string and then create the connection object. So obviously to read from the web.config, we have to use system.configuration namespace. And if we want to use SQL connection, SQL command objects, then we have to use the system.data.sql client, which is nothing but the .NET data provider for SQL Server. So first, let's read the connection string. And obviously, to do that, let's declare a variable. So we have a class called configuration manager, connection strings property, and then specify the name of the connection string, which in our case is dbcs. So let's copy this. Now we have spoken about you know how to use this connection object, connection manager, etc. in our previous video sessions. So if you're new to that, please check the parts one, two, and three of this video series. So we get the connection string, and then we need to create the SQL connection object. So let's say SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection, and to the constructor we can pass the connection string, which will create the connection for us. Okay, and the good practice is basically to use using statement so that the connection will be automatically closed for us. We don't have to close the connection. Okay, so now we have to prepare our command object. So obviously to prepare the command, we use the SQL command class. So SQL command cmd is equal to new SQL command. And if you look at the you know constructor of SQL command, we have four versions of SQL command constructor. It's basically overloaded. Okay. Now we are going to use a constructor which is taking two parameters, the command text, which is of string type, and the SQL connection object. We have already created the SQL connection object, so we'll be passing in that. So we first need to prepare the command text. So the command that we want to execute is this one, select these four columns from this TBL product table. So let's copy that. And it's a string. If you look at that, the command text is a string. So you can look at that in the IntelliSense. So copy, paste that there. And then if you look at the next parameter that we want to pass is the SQL connection object. And we already have one here. So let's pass that. 
okay so if you look at our command object now this command object you know whenever this query gets executed on the SQL Server database what are we getting back we are getting multiple rows of data back so whenever we get multiple rows of data back we use the execute reader method to execute that command on the SQL Server so obviously we want to execute that command and to execute that command we use command dot execute reader and if you look at this execute reader method look at the IntelliSense what is the return type SQL data reader okay it's going to return a data reader back okay what is the SQL data reader don't worry about that we're going to talk about that in a later session so I will have to store that data in a SQL data reader or you can directly bind that to a grid view control if you want so let me bind that directly to a grid view control so grid view one dot data source is equal to that one whatever this command returns this method returns I'm going to bind that directly to this grid view control so call the data bind method that's it but then before we actually execute the command we need to open the connection so let's open the connection okay so obviously if we run this now we should see data in that grid view control loading up so let's actually close this let's run this once again so now what should happen this command should get executed on the SQL Server database and then execute that command whatever result that is returned by this method execution it's going to set that as data source for the grid view control and calling the data bind and we see the results here okay now if you look at this you know it's pretty simple creating the command object we are using a constructor which is taking two parameters okay so when we do this we are creating the command object in one line but you might see you know in, in some of the programmers doing that in different lines for example they just use a default you know the parameter less constructor and then they use the command text property to set the command look at that the command text property the data type is string so I can just pass in the command name I mean the command that I want to execute and you can also set the connection using the connection property so if you look at that there is a connection property so we can specify the connection that you know that we want to set which is nothing but this one so here we are actually creating the command object in three separate lines so obviously let's copy that query here and paste it so now if we run this the behavior is exactly same except that we have created the command object in three different lines rather than you know using the constructor which takes the two parameters here we are using the you know the parameter less constructor okay so we have seen when to use the execute reader method now let's look at when to use execute scalar method and finally we'll talk about execute non query so execute scalar use this when the query returns a single value okay now let's say you know I have a query like this select count of product ID So what is this going to return? This query is going to return the total number of rows in this particular table. Let's say I want to retrieve this. Now if, if, if I execute this query, I'm just getting a single value, a scalar value. So if I want to execute a query like this, then I use execute scalar. Now you might be thinking, can't I use execute reader? We can use, but it's not efficient. You know, if you just want a single value, there is no point in returning a reader object back. Okay, we just want that single value so that's why we use execute scalar so let's go ahead and copy this command So I'm gonna copy that let's flip back to Visual Studio now the command that I want to execute is this one select count of product ID and we know that this is going to return a single value so instead of saying we can actually get rid of that grid view control now so let's go ahead and delete that from the UI as well because we are gonna get a single value back we don't need a grid view to display that okay so this is the command now when I say command dot execute non query look at that what is the return type of execute non query the return type is it's not non query execute scalar because we are getting a single value back so execute scalar now if you look at this execute scalar method what is the return type it's the object data type okay and if you look at the query what are we actually getting back we're actually getting an integer back okay but the return type of this method is object 
okay now we know that system dot object is the you know base type for every type in dot net so obviously you can convert that object to an integer type okay because the reason why they have marked the return type of this execute scalar as object because you know if i select the name of the employee who has the highest salary then it's going to be a string or I, I can select the date of birth of a person who has the highest salary in which case it returns a date time so we don't know that what what is the data type of that single value that gets returned is going to be that's why you know it's object data type depending on what you are expecting back from that query you you as a developer has to convert it to the appropriate type and use it accordingly okay so since now we are expecting an integer data type I'm going to type cast that to be of type integer so int let's say total rows is equal to that one but then since this one returns an object type I have to type cast that to integer so I get that there now all we do is write that onto the response stream so response dot write total rows is equal to plus we have the variable which receives the total rows so convert that to string and display that so now when we execute this it should return those two rows and print that message total rows is equal to three on the web form alright so anytime you want to retrieve a single value use execute scalar which is much better than using execute reader alright so when do we use execute non query whenever your query performs an insert update or delete operation so you're actually inserting updating or deleting then use execute non query alright so let's see how to do that so if I want to insert obviously insert rows into this table if you look at the columns that we have you now we have so many columns so we have to provide the value so let's first write the query so insert into TBL product table values so if you look at TBL product and if you look at the ID column you know this is not an identity column so we need to supply a value for that so let's supply a value primary key is 4 name of the products let's say calculators and maybe the unit price is 100 and quantities of 230 quantity available so obviously we want to execute this query so let's copy that so my command that I want to execute is this one and then this is the connection on which I want to execute this command open the connection and instead of using execute scalar I will use execute non query because this is an insert operation so execute non query now if you look at execute non query IntelliSense you know look at the return type it's an integer so why is execute non query returning an integer basically when we perform an insert update or delete okay the database is going to tell us how many rows have you inserted or how many rows have you updated or how many rows have you deleted so that number is going to come back okay so you can actually that's why the return type of this execute query is integer so you can capture that so I'm and we can get rid of the int conversion because it's already an integer so I'm going to store that here uh, let's say total rows affected because how many rows did we insert that let's give a meaningful name so total rows affected is that one and then I'm going to print that here that's it so we can say total rows inserted is equal to whatever we have inserted now let's run this as soon as we run this if you look at this now this table has got three records when we when we execute this query using the application it should insert a fourth record into that table so let's run that so total rows inserted is equal to one so now if we come back and execute this query we should see that okay all right so now how do I update it it's pretty simple all you have to do is specify what's your update statement let's say I want to update um, you know the desktops quantity available to 200 so how do we do that first let's write the query update TBL product set quantity available is equal to 200 
where product ID is equal to 2. So we want to update the desktop's quantity from 2 to 200, from 20 to 200. So let's copy that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse this command object. And to do that, all you have to do is change the command text. So command dot command text is equal to that's the command. Let's copy that here. And all you have to do now is execute the command. So command dot execute non query. And we don't have to re declare this because the variable is already declared. So now you can just output the message saying total rows updated. Okay, now if we run this as it is, we are going to get error because we already have a product row with ID is equal to 4. So first we need to delete that, otherwise we are going to get that error. Or what we will do is we'll write the query for delete as well. So let's delete the record. So to delete the record, we can use delete from TBL product. where product ID is equal to, let's delete the product with ID is equal to 4. Okay, so that's the command text. So before we copy paste that, let's copy and paste these lines. So the command text is that one there. Okay, so let's copy the delete from TBL product table and pass it in here. So all we are doing is delete from TBL product where product ID is equal to 4 and then you know execute non-query because that's a delete query and then we get the total rows deleted and we are saying total rows deleted is equal to whatever. And for us to have the output on separate lines, include the HTML break element. Otherwise, all three lines are going to come next to each other. And the output will not be good to look at. So wherever we have that response right, just put that there. OK. So now if we run this, what's going to happen? If you look at the rows that we have here, there are four rows. So when we execute this application, what should happen? It should first, it will delete a product with ID is equal to 4. It's going to insert that product again with ID is equal to 4. So by the time we run this, the product with ID is equal to 4 should be there. And then there's one query which is updating the quantity to 200 for product with ID is equal to 2. So currently the product with ID is equal to 2 is 20. Okay. And we are outputting messages, total rows deleted, total rows inserted, and total rows updated. Everything should be one. OK, so let's run this. So what should happen? We should get that message, total rows deleted, total rows inserted, and updated. And if we go back and check the results in the table, you know, it's updated to 200, and this calculator should be there. OK. So we have seen how to use execute non-query as well. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.